Mike Clay is on the line. I know a lot of you are here only because I'm, no, just kidding. We are gonna have a really interesting day today. And this is still, give me a one if you can hear me so that I know that I'm not talking to myself. I do frequently talk to myself, but wanna make sure that everybody can hear me. Can I have a one? Excellent. Everybody can hear me chatting away. Good. How is everybody today? Are we caffeinated, alert, happy, healthy? Give me a one if you're happy and healthy, and two if you're just really pissed off and angry at the universe. That'll help me know who not to talk to. Okay, we have twos, ones, two. I'm not talking to you. You know who you are. Uh, Jazz is happy. Oh, good. No, Jazz is usually happy. Okay. Caffeinating, not caffeinated, says Shane. All right, good. Fantastic. Can everybody see my screen? Here's what's going on. Uh, Sue's got some stuff happening in the main office. Uh, so I've got the master of the ceremonies today. And you can see I just defaulted to the Network Empire Domination team. There's Sue. Isn't she cute? Ex-military program. Don't let it fool you. She's not cute when she's mad. Uh, here's uh, me. And Matt Cruz is not with us. <laughs> what was that, Jimmy? Was that you? <laughs> oh, that was Sue. Okay. She is with us today, but she's got a couple of different things going on. This is Jimmy Kelly. Kevin, I don't think is on today. If he is, I didn't announce him. Kevin, you're not here, are you? No, he was doing something else. I don't, you guys know Kelly Reynolds? You guys familiar with him? He's on board full on now. Oh, Kevin, why didn't you? Kevin. Ugh, Kevin is on this call as well, which means it's extra dangerous. I don't know what to do with that guy sometimes. You should have seen his talk at the live certification event at some point. We'll start leaking out certain kinds of snippets there. Really, really great talk. I loved hearing what he had to say. Okay. He's not muted. Kevin, you should be getting we should be getting you on as a as a cohort. What's the word I'm looking for? Okay. So here's what we're gonna do today. It is seven minutes past the hour. And what we're gonna be doing is going through our regular we're gonna do a couple of websites and a couple of you had some. And we're going to talk about that. And Mike is also here. We're going to start to roll the buzz out. We've been doing a lot of buzz. Mike, are you on as a speaker or are you on in the general member? No, I'm, I'm a speaker. You're a speaker. That's awesome. I am. Okay, so uh, we're going to pull you in about halfway through and we'll start uh, you know, getting into some of the concepts. Basically, what we're trying to do is buzz roll this out a little bit for you guys so that you know what's coming so that we just don't blow everybody's mind in one day when we start to launch the course and this and that. And we'll get into what it is that we're doing and how Mike's doing it and how we're going to share that information with you. Okay. A lot of you are asking about the deep silo builder status. I know that it is a hot topic and uh, I am not even going to answer the question about that anymore. We found a couple of other things that needed to be corrected. And I mean it when I say like we are on the razor's edge of releasing it. Um, but I'm not going to speak to that because Sue and I have made agreements that I'm not going to talk about release dates anymore. Should be next week. Okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, now, the, the interesting thing is, is that it's, we have a lot of really, really cool things happening on the, front, on the plugin front. Uh, there's a lot more going behind the scenes. We have what's happening now is that Sue has got this whole process where these things are super high quality at this point. And I know that... Um, Mike Hayden is involved and we've got a really, really great rollout team. So I'm really excited on what's happening. It'll be kind of like, okay, well, these things rolled out and now we can like roll out like three or four things at once. So I'm really, really excited about our process. We actually had to roll, uh, you know, we had to do several types of development all at the same time, not forgetting that we have the Amazon product also being developed as Fran just asked, which is done and going to roll out eventually. Again, I'm not going to speak to the rollout date of that because Sue has told me not to talk about rollout dates anymore, but it's available coming up soon. Yes, if it weren't for the uh, for the members area overhaul, things yeah. would be up faster. And now, can I can I talk about that a little bit, Sue? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I shouldn't send them anywhere though, right? Can I, I can show them, but not send them. Oh, but they would be able to see the link. You can show them. Um, it'll be ready tomorrow. Yeah. All right, you guys. Here's what's happening. <laughs> um, we are rolling out all new Network Empire look and feel, okay? And uh, with the exception of my horrible photograph, it looks like I'm holding an invisible beer. Um, but the main thing is that we are rolling out an all new Network Jimmy Empire. Jimmy just grabbed it out of your hand. <laughs> I was like, whoa, wait a second. Uh, 
because of a huge amount of information overload that we've provided people over the last few years, we had to do our spring cleaning. And our spring cleaning involved getting rid of any products that we might have created prior to 2014, including some of my old Google Plus curation stuff. They're still available, but we put them into the archival stuff so that we can roll out all new product information. A lot of this is in honor of several new software plugins coming out, as well as the amazing conversations we've been having with Mike Clay on Cell Reports First. Okay, and CellReportsFirst.com is going to be a place where we start to launch and roll out that now. Those of you who are at, who are in our middle grade package, I think it is something like, what is it, the $147 price point or something, Sue? 197 and above. Okay, 197 and above will have access to the um, Mike Clay Cell Reports first model, phase one, or what we call the basic version of that. And we're also gonna be having an advanced training on that. But again, not what the call's about today, just want to make sure that you are aware that uh, we've clean, we're going to be rolling out a major cleanup, a major spring cleaning of the Network Empire members area. So it's going to be less cluttered and very, very clear path. And uh, you're going to know exactly what it is that you have and what you're entitled to. And, you know, so Sue's been really busting everyone's hump to get that done, but mostly her own. So I just wanted to make sure that that was going on. Uh, you guys knew what was going on. So this is really, our company is in massive growth, but interestingly, it's uh, being very well organized and she's making sure of that. So thanks, Sue. It's been really a lot of fun working with that and working with you on this last few days. Okay, let's go into, uh, somebody toss out a link and then we'll, you know, again, we'll have the Mike Clay happy hour here about halfway through. Somebody give me a link and we'll go ahead and bring, this is a bring your own website. And who? Or question. Somebody had a question for me. They dropped into me. It's in Skype yeah. or email, and it's not at my fingertips. So, okay. If you're on the call, please drop it again. Yeah. Anybody have that? Okay. Looks like Heidi's bringing some site up. I will look at it on the other screen first, Heidi, because I don't want you to do like you did last time and pass me that porn link. I'm just kidding. I, I bust Heidi's chop sometimes because she doesn't like that. Okay. Okay. Here's the site that you're looking at. <laughs> at least Heidi laughed at that. I'm glad to, to know you have a sense of humor. Okay. So we are looking at, uh, wow. That's how it's spelled, isn't it? What is that? Is that the name of the product? So it's C Schmidt solve. Is that the, oh, C Schmidt, I see. Okay. That's probably a domain name you're never going to care if anybody remembers. And if it is, then you need to do it again. That's a difficult one to remember. Like I would have had a hard time typing it in easily, but that's okay. I'm not being hypercritical, just letting you know that, you know, you might want to rethink the handler for uh, billboards if you go to billboards or print ads. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and look through this. <laughs> Heidi said, I told him that, but he wanted the family name. Okay, got it. So it's a family branding thing. Got it. That happens. Heidi, what is the most important? By the way, I think you did an interesting job on this. I don't think it's ugly at all. It's actually starting to look pretty good. Is this on uh, Mike Hayden's theme? Is this the Genesis theme? Oh, okay. Very good. You got your videos here. Okay. Is that your voice on the video, Heidi? Yes, it is. Okay. Cool. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, what's the biggest thing that you want to uh, know about this site? Do you want to focus on website architecture or website persuasion or business architecture? Which of the three architectures? are you most interested in? <laughs> she says persuasion needs sales. Okay. How big is the list on this, Heidi? And where do I opt in to get more information? I just call. Okay. There's no newsletter or anything. I'm just kind of curious about that. Oh, 
Okay. No, I'm just uh, hope you don't mind if I punch around here a little bit. Looks like you just launched, so. Cool. Let me see what you got going on. The videos are on the front. They should give everybody. Somebody play some music. Okay. All right, there's your drop down menu. Okay, so what are the channels of marketing for this person? What did you promise this guy, Jez? That you'd make a million dollars in two days? Or that he would gradually to see what what did you when you approached this client, what were you trying what is he expecting? Four days <laughs> he says, four days. Okay. But what did you promise, if I might ask? I'm just more curious about, also since Mike Clay is here, I want him to start seeing you know, more and more like how our users and how our uh, students and you know, how the, everyone in the community, everybody handles their sales and clients a little bit different. So Heidi, what precisely did you, um, is this a joint venture partnership or did he pay you for some kind of work? And if so, what was the work? What was the digital marketing function that you provide him? Wondering if I should unmute her. Although you got to kind of watch her when she gets going. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. <laughs> She's like, that would be easier. Uh, let me think about how to do that. Heidi, can I unmute you? Or do you not have a headset? I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy doesn't care. He just turns his headphones on when his kids are screaming. <laughs> okay. All right. She doesn't want to turn on because she's got kids running around. All right. Uh, can you please answer my question though? What are you, what, what promises were you making your client? Like how would you make money off of this? You personally. Okay. Ouch. So is that why you don't want to answer? You're telling me that you don't know what you promised the client? I'm not quite sure I'm following, Heidi. How are you, why are you doing this for this client? All right, is it for rankings, for traffic, for sales? Oh, she says I can unmute her now. Can one of you guys unmute Heidi for me? So we I can talk. I don't have any, I don't have any control. You should. I did give you control, but I, I will unmute her. Go for it, Heidi. Hello, can you hear Hi. me now? Hi, Heidi. Hi. You don't mind me teasing you, do you? No, no of course not. <laughs> that's in, that's, I say that's in the fine print, to harass and to be harassed. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, we met Heidi at OMG Live 2014? Yes. Okay, that was fun. Yes, and I've been tormenting you ever since. <laughs> no, no torment. No torment. <laughs> So okay. what's going on okay. with this? Why are you doing this? And how do you make money with this? Okay, this gentleman, um, this is his great-grandfather's family formula that he brought over in the late 1800s from mm -hmm. Germany. Okay. And with that, he, um, this salve is unlike any kind of medical ointments that are out there or anything like that. And sure. so um, all of his ingredients that he uses are all natural, organic, and non-GMO for as much as he can get them. That's what he does. And they work on skin. It doesn't matter what kind of skin, whether it's human or animal, mm -hmm. it works on skin and gotcha. it pulls the infection out that's underneath. So a lot of people with diabetic sores or other sores and other things and you know, even with this testimonial that I put together, as you look through it, the arm is red and pink because the guy is allergic to the adhesive on the Band-Aid, but the, it's not a, he's not having a problem with the drawing sap pulling out the infection. So he wants, he um, also sends it over to other countries and helps out some of the people who are not really... Okay. Like a stringent on medical terms. They just need help, so they'll work with something. Okay. Um, but he wants to get it, and it, he wants to eventually have it in, like, the Walmarts and all the other ones. And I'm like, those are a little bit big, and I'm not against it. I'm not going to tell you it's not going to happen, but let's just start doing this now. So I did put together a um, an opt-in 
thing and some opt-in and stuff to get emails and start building the email list, but it wasn't populating. I didn't like the way it was populating, so then I, I did this. I did it this way, um, and then I just put a second video up on the top. Well, it's not so, really, yeah, it's not really an either or, but okay. So what's your, I'm still trying to get out of you. You've been hesitant. What's your relationship with this client? How do you personally make money? Um, he's more of a friend, so we're doing it, some of those, so he has paid me for it, like, um, monthly to work on this site. Okay. And he's like, when I make it really big, he's like, then I'm going to give you more money to do more stuff. I want to be able to give you more money to keep going, um, with this. So it's not... You know, it's, it's, yes, yeah, so I do make some money. I don't know what it's going to, I don't know how to really answer long term as what the end is going to be, but he sees this as being like a huge million dollar company. And I can see it. And I know that with listening to how everybody else does everything else and how they do everything, we can do it. I also helped him when he went through the pricing on here to do the pricing so that way he can um, send it out as an affiliate product. So, like, what his cost is, and then he makes 100% off of that, and then he doubles that. So, like, if somebody wants to buy this for, like, $32, like, 50% of that would go towards the affiliate. I mean, he's okay. not sure if he's going to necessarily stick to that, but I'm like, you know, that's something you can do, and that's kind of like you get into email marketing, and you get into the, like, I know it's there, but sometimes just putting all the pieces of how I see it all working it just kind of gets stuck between my left ear and my right ear. Okay, I understand. Okay, all right. Um, so, th actually, this is perfect. Uh, today, I want to address less of the. Obviously, you can see my question was, "How are you making money?" So it sounds to me like you're going to get paid if he makes money. And that yeah, I mean, he has paid me, and like I was just talking to like my computer when I when I bought this computer over two years ago, you know, I'm like my computer's not working right. I thought I was just doing Word documents to do website stuff or for writing. I wasn't contemplating building Camtasia videos or building, you know, all this other stuff and getting on Skype and jumping on Facebook and jumping on webinars. And a lot of times my computer recently has been crashing. So he's just like telling me like, I'll buy you a new computer. You need another computer. Okay. You know, you know so, I mean, he's paying me about $1,500 a month I and I've been working uh, or, or something like that. And so that's kind of what I'm working okay. off of that. Heidi, I'm going to mute you just because okay. of the background, but that's okay. That's what I really <laughs> needed to know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Heidi. And we'll we'll do some talking here about it. This is a perfect uh, site to discuss and then roll into what Mike's talking about. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I just muted her because of the back. I was getting some background feedback, uh, otherwise known as children. Just kidding. All right, you guys. So there's a couple of things that I would personally say. One of the things that I want to zoom in on in this webinar is how we get paid. I think it's really great uh, that Heidi's got this gig and she's working on it. And one, things, one of the things that I wanted to point out here, uh, and I know that Sue and definitely Mike <laughs> and Jimmy can jump in on this. One of the things that we're going to be moving more and more towards is as a digital agency, as a web developer, as an SEO, you know, depending upon how it is that you're front-ending yourself, I want to make sure that we talk today about how everybody gets paid. And because we have like however many hundred people we have in this call, or I haven't even looked, whatever it is, uh, we have about... Some of you who are actually selling SEO or search engine optimization up front, some of you who are uh, selling leads and or maybe you get paid to put together a sales funnel and or persuasion. Some of you who might take the approach that Mike Clay is going to talk about where you're actually a digital agency and you're providing the information. And what's interesting is that all the things that Heidi just discussed as she went through the persuasion and, and she's done a great job of finding what Sue and I call the painkiller. This is all about the ISGNA. This is something that we teach in our advanced courses. Obviously, he's directly involved with painkilling. In fact, we actually use skin rashes and, and skin ailment marketing in certification level one, you know, before she brought us this. So it's kind of interesting she's in that same topic. So there's no, it's not a parable here. Like there is literally, we're talking, uh, you know, the right type of product to find when you're dealing with uh, a pain in the marketplace. The other, the main issue is like, how is it that you find yourself getting paid and how do you set yourself up to get paid? Uh, she's getting paid for the, for the work. One of the big challenges that beginners or intermediates have, and I'm not suggesting that she's either a beginner or intermediate or advanced. I'm just saying that one of the things that I 
was aware of in my early days on the web was managing client expectations. Give me a one if you feel like you're pretty good in managing client expectations or a two if you're not really sure and it, you're kind of filled with this sense of dread when you're, you know, you're wondering, you know, whether the client's going to call you or not. And when the phone rings, you're not sure that they, you want them to call you. I start the negotiations with whips and there's never a problem. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just trying to get a sense of what everyone's saying here. Okay. So we have uh, a few different kinds of uh, responses to that. So one thing I wanted to point out with Heidi is that all of the things that you were talking about, when I asked you if you wanted to talk about SEO, since we have one of the best SEOs probably in the world, two of them in the world on this call, is that wasn't even really your interest. Your interest was in that you needed to start making sales. So it became about persuasion, it became about conversion. And then you rolled into the path of figuring his entire thing out and him talking about whether he wants to go through distribution. And suddenly it started to feel like, uh, you know, we were dealing with a conversation with somebody on Shark Tank, which Stephen Session is also here on this call who's actually been on Shark Tank, right, Stephen? <laughs> um, so what's very interesting about that is, Heidi, you don't, you aren't getting paid enough to start thinking about his uh, long-term digital marketing plan or his long-term success. That's what being an entrepreneur is about. And when you get really, really good at that kind of stuff, then you usually either take a piece of the business or you charge a lot. Wouldn't you agree, Mike? It helps if I unmute myself. Uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> so that's one of the things I wanted to point out. Is like there's nothing wrong with think, giving the global view, but the, the real thing, and the real thing is you guys got to determine what it is that you're selling. If you're selling, you know, working on the site and getting out to market and getting conversions, one thing I would like to caution you against is the, the common, you know, challenge. I'm not going to say mistake. I'm going to say challenge is when you're first coming out of the gate is that when people hire you, they expect you to be all things to all aspects of your business. And you end up getting paid a thousand or $2,000 a month to build somebody's business for them. And it's you know, pretty much become a business expert, you know, for them. And they want you to believe in the vision they want to bring you on board. And, you know, and then it becomes this unclear expectation of what it, what is the definition of success? And then they try to draw you into all the aspects of the definition of success. Uh, for their business. And what I'm letting you know is that when you start thinking this thing through and you start looking about how you build clients, how you get paid and what expectations you're selling and managing, uh, you can make a lot more money up front with a lot less ambiguity by understanding exactly what it is you're trying to accomplish. And, and the, the main thing there is knowing exactly what it is that you're trying to sell. Okay. So that's, and again, a lot of the times the first sites that we build are for friends, uh, you know, don't get me wrong. Uh, we've all been there. We've done it or somebody who we just like their vision. And there's also nothing wrong with that. Uh, but what's really interesting is whether you like someone's vision or not, you can still get paid a whole lot of money that's reasonable to them with the reasonable expectations. For example, I was trying to find out uh, for Heidi, whether or not she had promised rankings. That's really what I was getting at. If she, and if she didn't process, um, promise rankings for these types of infections and these types of things for this product, then that's actually a good thing. If you're getting paid and it's one of your first or few gigs and you're doing that and you haven't promised rankings, that's actually pretty good to not have that. So I'm glad that I don't think Heidi took that, that route. How many of you, let me just get a little bit of sense of those of you on this call. I'm having a hard time finding my question matrix here. Let me turn this off. Where is everybody? How many of you, um, charge for rankings you get paid you get paid if you get someone ranked give me a one if you get paid for someone gets ranked and two if the way that you get paid has nothing to do with that okay we have three twos everybody i want everybody's feedback on this one if you get paid for rankings two if you do not get paid for rankings Okay, there's one of you that's both. So far, most of you do not get paid for rankings. Okay, anybody else? There's a lot more of you on this call. Okay, one person is saying it depends on the client. Okay, all right. So we're going to get into this a little bit about ways that you can get paid up front. Uh, are there any, is there anybody here that already gets paid up front for working with the client just to get started, like a startup fee or a cost allocation fee? Give me a one. If you get paid up front, I just want to get a general sense. And two, 
if you get paid by results is the big thing. Okay. Uh, so there's a few of you that do get paid by results, but most of you do not. Okay. That'll get us started. Um, give me a one if you get paid more than $3,000 up front or two if you get paid less than $500 up front or less than $3,000 up front. Sorry. Okay. So some of you are already getting paid up front. Okay, good. It gives us a general consensus. We're just trying to get a, a general sense. And what I would what I would really like to point out as we get into what Mike does is that there's ways to actually get paid for the plan. Anybody already getting paid for the plan? Give me a one if you already get paid for a plan and you haven't even done any work or broken ground. You just li literally get paid for the doing the reporting first. Good job, Fran. Okay. Hi, Marcus. It's good to see you. I missed you at Theme Zoom Live this year, but I'm really glad that you're here. Okay, that's all right, Marcus. We'll get you up to speed on, on some of this. Okay, not consistently. All right, so we have different levels of that. Okay, good. So here's the thing is if you, <clears throat> if you are going to be selling SEO and rankings, you have to be able to deliver on that. And even if you can deliver on that, you really need to be considering the difference between digital marketing and the difference between SEO and digital marketing and how to manage the expectations of the clients. You also have to understand quite a bit about parameters with clients. Uh, so, for instance, if you manage their expectations one particular way and they don't pay you, for instance, or, and you've done the good work, then you have to be able to turn it off if possible. In other words, we call this welding the client to your hip. And there has to be the pain of disconnect. And I know that sounds really, for those of you, especially if you like your clients, because we have a whole lot of clients that we actually like as well. You know, they have to be able to pay you. And what do you do when your client stops paying you? Has anybody ever had that experience of a, of a core client uh, who stops paying you and it's actually hit your business pretty hard? Give me a one if you've ever had that experience. Okay. Quite a few of you. Okay. Marcus is talking to somebody who... Yeah, I'm not going to put the amount, but it's five figures. Okay. Yeah, so don't do that. Stop it. <laughs> Did you guys ever see the video, Stop It with uh, Newhart? It's my favorite funny YouTube video ever. The thing is, is that we've all been through that, and we've all had different kinds of experience. So we're going to be showing you how to get yourself into a position where you really don't have that problem anymore. And so we'll get into that a little bit. Okay. So one thing I would say to answer Heidi's question, and then we'll kind of get more into, I'm not here to just use you as an example, Heidi. That's not what we're talking about here, because this is great work. I'm really excited about what you're doing. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you didn't guarantee results and you didn't only get paid on whether or not, you know, he starts making a million dollars on, you know, selling his product. Because Sue and I have both been in this market and this type of thing. We know the health industry and there's all kinds of things that you can do to make money, but the degree to which you get paid and engage in your, you know, whether you get a cut of it or your arrangements with the client are super, super important. And then you get to decide what to do. It's kind of that chicken or the egg thing. When you get involved in this really ambiguous kind of relationship, ambiguous kind of relationship with the client, it's like, well, I'll start paying you when I'm successful. That's called uh, pay per performance. And you really don't want to do that as a beginner. Step way, way away from uh, pay for performance because you have a lot to learn. <clears throat> and you, and even if and Tyson is saying, "Oh, better have that in writing." No, <laughs> my philosophy over the years has changed, and I'm, I'm speaking only for myself. I'm only speaking for Russell Wright. For me, owning a piece of a company, an LLC or a joint venture, is just not all that anymore for me. It's the amount of headache and pain and stuff that you have to go through in order to make that. It would have to be somebody that I really know. And it would have to be a company that really has money. And it would have to be a project that was greater than $3 million a year. Okay, that's just for me personally. Okay, and because the headache and the pain that you have setting up a joint venture relationship with a client. So we, generally speaking, there's two things. When they offer you that, it's really not even that interesting. And second of all, it's better if you just control the expectations and, and are very, very clear on what the results that you are selling should lead to. Uh, because then there's no mismanaged expectation. Most of the serious mismanaged expectations that I've seen with clients 
are, when you look at it, I've walked a lot of students through painful separations with high paying and mid middle paying and then no paying clients. And what's interesting is when we walk through, when we do what's called an autopsy or relationship autopsy, we find out that significantly the expectations were poorly managed by you or by me, not by the client. The client will just ultimately believe or expand their expectations to whatever it is that you tell them. Or if they have their own set of expectations and they're not real and you act, you're, you're so needy that you say yes to those unrealistic expectations, that doesn't go anywhere good either. Does that make sense, you guys? Is that uh, useful? Okay, good. All right. So what I would say with this, Heidi, uh, is that make sure that you know what the expectations are. He's paying you to manage the site. And if he's paying you to manage the site, just the maintenance alone, just your webmaster's fee for keeping, keeping the site on the internet could be 500 to 1,000 a month. That's just for making sure that it doesn't go down. Okay, that's my personal opinion. And making sure that things are not horrible, making sure that it's not negative SEO, making sure that it stays up, making just the basics. As soon as you throw marketing and all that other stuff and you and caring about his success into the mix, you're at a point where you're adding different line items on that contract. You know, for example, maintaining his YouTube channel. I mean, what you've done is a whole bunch of marketing things. You're actually building his business for him. You've got your vo your audio, your voiceover on the audio, right? <laughs> you've got the channel set up. You've got all these different things. And that's pretty intense. And so that is not, unless that contract was prearranged and you are really clearly offering multiple services, that is a very, very rich contract in which, depending upon your accountability, uh, you're going to really need to be careful so that the relationship, very interestingly, <laughs> and sometimes over a beer, I'm sure Sue could talk to you about it, in this type of industry with people that you really end up liking, uh, or that, you've, that you really like in the beginning, we have our own experiences with this type of thing where the relationships don't stay that great <laughs> because the expectations aren't managed very clearly up front. Okay. And again, I'm speaking from experience. So that would be one thing to really be looking at. So here's an interesting thing, Mike Clay. Yes, sir. Let's go through a process. Okay. Let's go through a process here. Let's pretend if you don't mind, I want to look at the universe uh, according to Mike Clay. Cool. Okay, I'm Mr. Schmidt, and I called you, all right, so how does the process go? This, we'll use this as an example. I'm in the field, or I come across your organization. Walk me through your process about how your firm, your agency, handles something like this. Um, well, I mean, <clears throat> we'd sit down and just kind of figure out what, what your business goals are. You know, what, what do you want to do? Are, are you wanting to grow your business? Are you wanting to massively grow your business? Um, so is that like a it, what's what's the exact process? Is that like a phone call? It, it is. Normally we'll have a lead come in from a couple of different sources, and they're usually looking for SEO. Gotcha. So th then we they call in asking about SEO and about rankings, and then we shift the way they think about things. Gotcha. How do you do that? The reality. Oh well, that that's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Um. As soon as they ask me about SEO, I'll say things like, "Great, you know, yeah, we can we can do a lot for you on your SEO. We we have a really skilled team here. Um, do, do you already have the plan and your marketing strategy, and or even a blueprint already built that we can base uh, the work we're doing off of?" Gotcha. And they say, "What's a blueprint?" <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. and, and then I'm like, "Oh, well." You know, digital marketing and, and growing a business online isn't just SEO. SEO is search engine optimization. Um, that's just about getting you rankings. Right. Uh, are you wanting to focus on just rankings or do you want to grow your business? So already right there, you've clearly managed expectation and you've distinguished, you've created a distinction between the optimization of the search engines and building a, a business. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're educating from the first minute into the conversation. And so what's interesting there, if we get inside of your business and the way that, that things operate, if someone says, no, I'm only interested in SEO, then you could go one path. And, or if they say, no, I really want to, you know, most people end up saying, hey, no, I want to make money. It's kind of like Heidi just did is like persuasion. Like, how do I make more money? That's how do I make more sales, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, if, if they say, no, we're, we really are just looking for someone to do SEO, mm -hmm. um, I'm just honest with them. Look, 
we don't do SEO without a blueprint. Oh, okay. You know, we're not we're not the cheapest guy out there. Um, no, I got gotcha. you. Are, are you going around price shopping? And they usually say, yeah, we're we're talking to twelve different people and we're going to pick the best price. And I just tell them, yeah. We're not going to be a good match. Oh, interesting. Okay. So that's good to know. Um, I've talked to a few different kinds of students and, you know, we have all kinds of different firms and, and agencies in our community. So everybody, you know, tries their own methods. And But well, that's really, really cool that you do that. I get it. Okay. So what's the next step? If somebody is done, okay, let's say I'm like, okay, I have the skim bomb. That's not, no, you're right. I really, I would like to rank on the engines. And I presume that ranking on the search engines is useful and important. Uh, isn't it still or okay, but what do you mean? So I want to grow my business. What's my next step with you? I'm ready. Well, then, then what we need to do is we need to go figure out what's going on and we call it blueprinting. We, we build a digital marketing blueprint and that blueprint will tell us everything we need to do. So instead of talking about SEO first or pay-per-click or, or whatever you want to talk about for the marketing end of it, we need to build the plan. Gotcha. It's kind of like building a house. If, if you're going to build a house, do you start by painting the sheetrock, or do you go have an architect build a blueprint? But I like to paint sheetrock in my front yard. Well, yeah, you know, a lot of people do, especially with their websites. <laughs> no, I got you. So that's a really <laughs> that's a really interesting position, as you're just saying. You know, you give them really simple to understand ways of looking at it, which changes their perspective. And by viewing it as something that needs to be built, like any kind of a structure, they stop looking at it as like this miracle thing. Like they get back into their common sense. Well, SEO, you know, a lot of business owners are looking for SEO because they see it as a necessary evil to make their website profitable. Right, exactly. And what we're doing is we're throwing SEO out the window by changing the way we're talking about it. Got it. And it reframes the entire perspective. Okay, so my next pro – and again, we have a lot of this – we're going to be rolling out a lot more information to our users on this type of thing. Uh, but at that point, then – Okay, I say I'm ready. We're role playing here, okay? All right, no, Mike, Mike, I'm totally ready. I want to take uh, this to the next. I get what you're saying. How much I, w I really would like. So you guys will do the bl blueprint for me. How much is that going to cost me? Well, bl blueprints cost anywhere between $3,500 and about $6,500. Okay. And what we do is we're going to go look at your your website. We're going to go look at what you have, and then we'll build a proposal, and then we'll come back and sit down and go over the proposal. Okay, so I, I want that. What happens now? I'm, you just sold me. Where do I sign? I'm fumbling for my checkbook. Well, we we go do the proposal real quick while we have them on the phone and send them an invoice through FreshBooks. I'm waiting and tapping my foot. Why is it not here yet? <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So it's really that I, I easy. Is my point? Yeah. Okay. No, it, it is. But but it takes us two. It takes us two meetings. The first meeting to kind of get them warmed up to the idea of not buying SEO first. Gotcha. And then the second meeting to go through the proposal and close the deal. Now, let me ask you this. In terms of how many, what percent, I know this is kind of a weird question, but you have guys go away and think about it, right? Are they usually receptive to a second call once that you reframe their universe? I mean, you know, again, oh, yeah, uh -huh. we, we, leave, we end the first meeting with, let us go look at a few things now that we kind of know what you want to do and what your goals are. Sure. And we'll build a proposal, and then we'll come back together and look at the proposal. You Got call it. them up in a day or two and say, hey, we're almost done with the proposal. When can we meet? And they're like, now. They're, they're looking, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're, yeah. they're like, well, I'm available in two hours. Can you do it? Yeah, exactly. Um, and we don't send them the proposal until about 30 minutes to an hour before the meeting because we want to walk them through it. We don't want them reading it. Okay, so the first meeting is a you're getting enough information so that you know you can create the proposal. And I've watched you create a proposal. It takes just a few minutes. Yeah. Okay, and that you're pretty fast. And that's one of the things that we'll eventually be showing all of our students uh, that are taking that course. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. And so essentially what happens is before you really even break ground for this house, you're getting a minimum of 3 to 6K up front just for um, digging into the blueprint or just for like creating the plan. Yeah, and, you know, when we first started doing it, we did it for 1200 bucks and realized that was stupid. No. <laughs> <Why'd> we <do> that? <laughs> Whoops. Um, so, yeah, well, we've kind of found the sweet spot for a localized business, a, a local small and ma and pa company. Um, the sweet spot is, is like between 3500 and 4500 is what we found. Yeah. Uh, just for the data. Sure. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's interesting because I hear 
Um, let me see. Let me, Heidi's still talking here, and I'm so proud of her for just you know taking this thing on, and she's really getting better and better. Let me see if I can get these questions up. See what she's saying here. She makes a point that um, let me just pull this thing out and pull down. Let me see. Present. Okay, she's saying pres presentation on the site for the site to make sales, going off selling products that are thirty-two dollars and less. I didn't see it charging tons of money up front, but I, well, yeah, um, pushing SEO. One thing I will say, Heidi. Uh, is that generally speaking, the price of the product is one of the determining factors as to whether you should take the job. So again, why we teach that, and I'm not in any way criticizing you taking on this client because I know it was turned on because you were turned on by it because it was actually helping. It's uh, you know a really, really cool product. It really, really is. And we have a lot of really, really cool products and painkillers that come across our desk as well, and the margins are low. Okay, so again, one of the reasons in the DWS silo builder system, we actually have the, and Heidi, I know you haven't taken the training on that because I, you know, watch what everybody takes inside the members area. I'm watching you. Uh, inside of there, the, uh, the, the business decision screen is designed 100% for you to pre predict based on traffic and conversion, how much you and or your clients stand to make over the course of a year. You'll know exactly how much, or even a month, you'll know how much traffic you have to have. Remember, Heidi, you were talking about the affiliate program and this and that. Well, I can tell that you really haven't done the numbers, or if you have, uh, the numbers are not based on uh, Google alone, uh, because you know you're right that this person would need a distribution to really make uh, what I consider to be decent money. Uh, so again, this is why part one uh, dot swallowyourmarkethole.com, which is our certification level one, is all about really before you even take on a client. Like one of the things that I know that Mike Clay is already doing is determining you know, how much money, whether a client has the money to pay him, whether there's a margin there. By the time they reach him, he's already, you know, they're probably already in the realm of, you know, making reasonable amount of money to pay for their marketing. So that's one of the things that you have to to look at. If you, if you do put them on Amazon or something like that, <clears throat> you still have to consider the margins for Amazon Prime, Heidi. I'm sure you've done all that. Uh, I have several products that I watch on Amazon in the health industry for people that I know and care about. Um, it's been a bit of a challenge when there's high volume, it can be okay. But again, these are my real point here is that consider the margins of your product and the amount that you can charge and whether or not the product is a recurring. For example, one thing you may want to consider, uh, depending upon how often this stuff is used. If for example, Mr. Schmitz is using these, for example, equine or horse racing types of things where they go through a lot of it, you know, you can, anything you can, there's things that I thought that never could be a subscription that actually can be a subscription. <laughs> so it just depends on how it's being used. So you may want to look in that type of thing to increases LTV. There's a possibility there. Um, and this is something called a membership club. Usually uh, a lot of the products and services in the health industry where I didn't think a health, a, a product club would work surprisingly it can in some instances and health and wellness. So that's what I'm really pointing out, Heidi, is that really take a look at <clears throat> the business decision screen in DWS, any silo builder, uh, that's there for this reason, and really start pushing those numbers out. And again, these are all things that when you create a blueprint, you're gonna give your customer and client a pretty good idea of what's going on. you know. And also, I know that Mike probably weeds that out during the first couple of conversations. Is that correct, Mike? Oh yeah, we 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 pre-qualify them. We we there's a couple of questions we ask, and if depending on the answer to those questions, you know, we hear the cash register on a couple of them. Like, sure. do you have a media buyer? Yes. And no, that is. Do you mind? Do you mind sharing that trick? <laughs> well, here's the thing. For example, sure. George is asking a very decent question. George asks. Uh, George asks. Uh, Mike, charging 3,500 to 6,500 for a blueprint. What is the size of the revenue of a client that buys this? Sample industries would be helpful, and that connects to what you were saying that you how you prequal. Yeah, and and understand, we've sold these to small companies that are electricians in a small area, but we've also sold them to law firms with multiple offices. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Um. And we even pitched a national company this morning. Yeah, I, I'm excited about that. One of the things I found interesting, George, is that um, you would think that 
a, a company would have to be like huge in order to buy a blueprint like that up front. It's not. And we're, again, this is all about how it's positioned is you can still get local businesses that have a, a marginal business, uh, a marginal amount of money to spend to be able to do it because the benefits that they're going to get are there. So probably you wouldn't necessarily want to do every single type of mom and pop business up there. But again, you have to prequal them. Yeah, they need to they need to be a stable company. If, yeah. if they're if they're hurting so bad, they're going to go out out of business in ninety days. Mm -hmm. There's not much you can do. Precisely. And one thing I wanted to point out here, Heidi. Uh, and by the way, I realize this has turned a little bit into more of how to acquire clients. Heidi, you're doing a fantastic job on this. This is an awesome site, and we should look at the SEO a little bit. If not on this call, then. You know, the position of this call is a bit different. You ask for persuasion and these types of things and marketing. Um, shy away from startups. Yes. Okay. Start, startups are the issue. Um, and I, I was trying to find a gentle way to come out and just say that. <laughs> um, and there, there's always an exception to the rule. Absolutely. But... There absolutely is. In fact, you, you, when they have just money to blow, like, they, you know, they walk up. You can always tell if it's a startup with too much money on the runway. The runway during a startup event is how much money you have between A and B, where you have to be profitable. Either it's going to launch or those shareholders, and they just have money that they got to blow. That's that's when they walk up to you and just hand you a check, you know, for a very vague reason and say, "Yeah, give us a blueprint," and then walk away. They don't even want to like talk about it. That's a company that has money, and you can take those. I, I like the blueprint model for that type of thing too. <laughs> but yeah, you, it's but, uh huh. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, but when you're working, and I know that's happened to you as well, Mike, but when you're working with startups that, the kind of startups that I'm talking about are, Aunt Thelma has just launched a new internet business, or uh, your sister's brother's best friend has this awesome idea for this prototype of a product, and he wants to invest in all the internet infrastructure before the product's even been manufactured. How many of those do we get? Um, and, and you know, for those people, Sit down with an sit down for twenty minutes. Teach them how to use LinkedIn to go get some leads. Exactly, and Mike, Mike, when, once you guys, if you ever meet Mike, he is a very compassionate and caring person. We're not talking about not expressing in compassion. Like we all want to help the people in our lives, and sometimes we really feel like we find found a winning product. And I think in this case, Heidi, there is a winning product. The distinction between a winning product is and website development, how you get paid as an agency or or person is very, very different than Shark Tank. And that's what, if you guys are dealing with a lot of startups or a lot, or you have what we call entrepreneurial seizures on a regular basis, uh, Sue and I have a rule that we don't buy any domain names after 12 o'clock at night. <laughs> it started in the 90s, uh, early 2000. And we don't do any startups, uh, you know, two beers in. So uh, the, the main thing is, is that entrepreneurial seizure is when we have this great idea and we think it's cool, and there's a lot of people in our lives that have those, have a place to put those and let them percolate. And uh, that percolation will allow you to be, you know, look at things when you're a little bit calmer, when your dopamine's a little bit flatlined, <laughs> and you're not all excited for that new novel idea. And then you'll realize that there's, uh, there's ways that you can help those people who have those startups, because really what they're in the process of is learning of the concept of the lean startup. That distribution, invention, manufacturing, and making money in business, we call this business architecture. And that's why I said you want to talk about it. Yes, web silo architecture, SEO architecture, persuasion architecture, or business architecture. Because a business model, whether a product's a winning product, whether it can be manufactured, whether it can be whether you can make a lot of money on it personally, is very, very different than hanging out a shingle and getting a website on the internet. So if you do have startup, uh, if you do have startups that are are coming to you and they want to buy your services. What's so great about that is when you have really well established services and processes like Mike Clay does, and he's going to teach people over the next few months with us. Then when somebody comes to you and they try to haggle you into like, it would not be, it would not be a good idea, Mike, to try to talk you into paying you based on rev share of a product that's not yet sold, would it? No. You, <laughs> if, if, if I'm going to do a rev share, I want to see what your, your last, quarter of sales were yeah and even then like you would be you know you've got people that you know it's a, it's a numbers game you got people that would just pay you so yeah, it's, it's all about the numbers yeah absolutely so that's really I, I do definitely like what you're doing here i just want to make sure heidi that 
you know, you get paid really well for what you do because you're starting to get really skilled at putting together good stuff so far. And I have a question about this site, if mm -hmm. you don't mind. Sure. Um, Heidi, are you split testing any of the design on this with tr with the traffic? Um, and, and the reason I'm asking... Okay. No, she's not. All right. Because the reason I'm asking is I, I'm curious as to in WordPress under appearance menus, you can turn on classes on menus and add a class to a specific menu item to where you could wrap the store button in a box and make it a different color to see if that would draw people over to click on it and go to the store faster. Yeah, no, that's a that's a good interface idea. And I think this is actually Mike Hayden's plugin. I mean, uh, theme rather. And so I'm not sure how that would, yeah, I think you can. But yeah, split testing, is there anybody else who split tests in general? You're designing your layout for conversion. Give me a one if you do split test or two if you've never split test or you do not split test. I have a one. Lloyd does, uh, I, I think he does, it depends. Okay, almost nobody split tests. It is a lot of work to go to, but it's definitely, definitely worth it. In fact, this morning with one of my teammates, we were talking about the banner split testing project we're doing. And you can get some interesting insights into what's not working. It is really extraordinary the first time you ever have that experience. So anybody on this call who hasn't had the opportunity. And it can be a monthly upsell. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about that, Mike. We like the way you think. Are you telling me that it's a, an upgraded yes. menu item? Yeah, I, I charge... We charge an extra twelve hundred dollars for every three months of split testing. Interesting. Okay. And we run we run every test we run is a thousand visitors. So we tested over a thousand visitors to the site. Mm -hmm. And we'll run a test for up to three months. Gotcha. And as many as two tests in that time frame. Gotcha. Excellent, excellent. Lloyd, I'm not sure. What is that uh, link that you sent me? I'm not sure that I know what you're trying to say there. We have another person sending me something here. I've also got Rizal, who was the person who had talked to me before the... Uh... Oh, do you want to address that, Sue, to give me a break for a second? Sure. And I'd like to say a couple things about Heidi's site there. Hey, girlfriend, you got drop-down menus. And... Um, that's going to bleed your theme. I'm also wondering, it looks like skin problems is really the only um, top-level theme that you've got going on. And I just wondered if you wanted to break that down into some silos. So, like, if I look at your page on skin problems, you've got skin sores, infections, and drawing salves. And... You could have those be three different silos and have pages under those. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I might just to get because the keywords that you're after. Well, first of all, skin issues and skin problems. Those are really broad. Um, How did you get these keywords, Heidi? Oh, have finished. I think she's still in the middle of this thing, Sue. So. Um, okay. All right. So, so, yeah, I would just, I would take a hard look at those keywords and I'd probably restructure the site a little bit based off of that. Um, and I would make sure that you're targeting some keywords that are going to be pretty easy to rank for quickly since his price point on the products are pretty small. And um, I might look at... Um, she says she ran a report VR software. Okay, but if you did that, then you would probably want some additional silos on there. Yeah, I'm just... It's, it's been a long time since I've looked at the skin market. It's probably been three or four years, um, so I really couldn't speak quickly to how competitive the keywords are, but I'm sure terms this broad are going to be um, really competitive. 
And so I'm just like looking at your site, thinking about what kind of keywords you're going to rank for and how that's going to go. And um, you know what I might actually recommend on your homepage? You've got such a compelling video there. Um, like if that's a particular thing like diabetes, if that's a diabetes-related wound, I would go after that because that's a niche kind of a thing if you said like diabetic skin infections or diabetic skin issues. I would imagine that those are going to be terms that are going to be easier to rank for than something as generic as skin problems. So I would look at, at getting down into the different particular kinds of infections and um, you've got some of those ideas over there under skin problems. Let me just let me dig just a little bit deeper. Let me just see. So like I picked on uh, staph infections and you've got a video there. And if you had a couple more pages to go underneath that to make a real silo out of it, then some of those keywords would probably pop pretty quickly. You, you do some domain authority stacking to it and you could probably make some, uh, some dents in some of those markets. But the site, the way that it's set up right now, I don't think it's going to rank very easily. Yeah, I'm, uh, Heidi, just a quick question also related to that. Uh, agreeing with everything Sue said, uh, what was the decision to put the recent posts? I was wondering if there's a specific reason that you did that. Is it just more for engagement? Okay. Okay. Pretty much. So she's still working stuff out. That's all right. Okay. We'll come. We'll come back around to this, um, uh, Heidi, and we'll, we'll get you off the hot seat for now. But definitely, there's a bit of a SEO technical improvement that we can play around with. But that being said, one thing I can say is that you certainly are not sitting on your butt and you're doing things. So yeah, it's huge, a good huge, huge applause for for Heidi. Yeah. Okay. A, a lot of really great videos on there. Like uh, yeah. It, you get the traffic on there and it will convert. Yeah, it's uh, it's got, you've got to, it is true that the product was a good choice. Margins are a little low, um, and, but the interaction and a great site to cut your teeth on uh, in terms of dealing with clients and everything. Heidi, good job. Yeah, you know, the other thing that I would say, I know um, when you were talking, when uh, you came on for a few minutes, you were talking about affiliate markets and uh, doubling the price and that kind of thing, but... Um, like if you, I'm trying to think of how much a quarter ounce really is. Like I would, there's a thing that I've run across and I don't know how to explain it other than, than to just say it. So like if you're competing in a market where the average price of a quarter ounce of skin salve is 20 bucks and you come in at $7, people are going to raise their eyebrow and assume it doesn't work because the price is too low. Yeah, uh, I yeah, I would actually raise the price of this product. I would too. Uh, I'm just telling you, I mean, I have in this market, I've been in this business, I'm good at it, I know the health industry. This product, well, I'm going to be careful what I say. Um, this is based on a personal branding as a family heirloom. And as long as you don't put as long as you don't position it as too much of the heirloom like you you want <laughs> it's a little bit tricky you don't want the branding to give you the sense that you're mixing this in your basement okay so you got to increase the the quality of the of the branding and the wrapping just a little bit i'm just telling you from my experience even though this is way beyond the scope of this call okay packaging is everything i know it's horrible and you, you all heard it. it's almost cliche but it really is but you can still do a it family really is. but you can really do a family heirloom thing with it and you know I'm fine that the, the guy is on the front of it. Uh, women personal branding do, does a lot better than men personal branding on packaging. It's just something I know from lots of experience. But that being said, um, you can position it a little bit higher and it won't be that quality that Sue, <laughs> there's a general feeling that if, if it looks or feels like it's being built in your basement or you're mixing the product in your basement or something, <laughs> there's, a, there's a kind of wrapping design and or price, which, distinct, which is very distinct from that. Yeah. And you'll do a little bit better. And it's kind of hard to talk to people about in the same way. It's kind of weird. And Sue and I have both, both faced this. In the same way, it's hard to get rid of the csschmidtsalve.com. And no matter what you say, they already got that in their head. You have a hard time messing around with their packaging. <laughs> there's, a, there's a very similar resistance because they already got it all figured out, you know. 
And, and it's interesting, that's why when you're on Shark Tank or something like that, and they'll argue for 20 minutes about whether or not they can repackage or not. That's how hard it is. And because those guys already know, like if it's not repackaged, it's not gonna work on QVC. All right, so just keep that in mind that you're dealing, yeah. Heidi, you're dealing with a lot more issues than just web development at this point. You're dealing with how money is made. I call this business architecture. Okay, and this is something that Sue and I have years of experience in, and it's really beyond SEO. It's, it's more than just SEO or web development even. Uh, just keep in mind that that is, again, why what Mike is trying to show us is that you must manage expectations. You've got to be clear how you're making money. Otherwise, you're going to spend all of your free time arguing just like the people in Shark Tank argue. You know, and their arguments take less than seven minutes. They're like, you're gone. I'm out, right? No, I'm out. Like, you're not going to change the brand of this thing. I, we already know it won't work. We run the QVC distribution network. We've tested thousands of products. But since, you know, you don't come, come at it like that, we're coming at it like web developers. Somehow it becomes about the website and it's just not <laughs> at all. <laughs> okay, good. What's the next question, right. Sue, you wanted to get so into? So let me grab the, um, the um, screen for a second. Yes, please do. And It's all yours. Uh, which screen are we showing? This one. Good. All right. So this is... Risel's blueprint. And so what he was asking me is, um, and Mr. Kelly, I'm going to need your help here. What he's asking me uh, was if he's got, like, his keywords repeated too many times. Uh. All right. So his, um, oh, those are supporting keywords. All right, good. We won't get into that. Um so he's got a single silo site, which I had already talked to him about a little bit, and that, you know, uh, a single silo isn't really a silo. And I, this crops up from time to time. Guys get in this. I, I think they talk amongst themselves on Skype, and um, they get this idea, or, or they just have one topic that they think they want to go after. So he's, um, he's doing a site on Costa Rica fishing. Now, I know nothing about fishing, which is another reason why I would need Jimmy's help. Um, but let me just see if I've got the domain name here a second. And Rizal, I'm scrolled way back up in the Skype conversation so that I can see the information that you sent me. So if you would um, type over on the, um, the actual questions box your new comments, then I'll be able to see what it is you're saying easier. So... Um, 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 um. What was, remind me what the domain name was that you were looking at. I think there were a couple of them that we were, you were going back and forth on, and we were talking about whether or not something should be in the subdomain. Um, so I'm looking, Jimmy, are you still there? You're very quiet. Yeah. Don't make me hear you. Okay, good. So. We were talking about, did he put in his, you haven't built the domain yet, but you were looking, all right, so he's looking for a domain name. What was the idea that you shot me in Skype, Rizal, as far as, um, as far as what it was that you were thinking of doing? Costa, costafishing.com. So he would have something that's costafishing.com slash Costa Rica fishing slash Costa Rica fishing report is the way that would go. So I could tell by that, just right bang out the box, that that was going to be Costa Rica fishing just a little bit too much. But as I sat there and, and contemplated it for a few minutes, I was like, oh, that's going to take more than just a couple of seconds. So I asked him to jump on this call so that we could look at what might be an optimal way of constructing this site. Can you see my, my screen okay? Should I make it larger? No, oh, we could see it. Okay. Or I could see it. I still might make it a little bit larger. Um, wow, well, can I do that? So what are your thoughts right out of the box then? Well, are they going to make their domain name brandable like is this a long-term business or is this an affiliate program or like where do they want to go with it 
because I would, you know, I my first choice is always not to put keywords into the root if I can help it. Or at least put a pure diverse in there. That's what I usually pick. Right. Oh, so he was saying that he wants to change the selects once he gets them into WordPress. Oh, so these would be like the titles. And then he would change the selects. But still, I'm interested in, in the whole construction. So, so you wouldn't put Costa Rica Fishing in the domain name? If that's the only place it's going to be, you could. Well, but I would make I wouldn't put phishing in the root, but I would be tempted to put Costa Rica into the domain name. Okay. Or it, as a sub. Okay. So what if you did something like dub 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 dot Costa Rica travel dot com, something like that? Or fishing dot Costa Rica travel dot com? You probably do like fisherman. I don't know, fishermanparadise.com or something like that. <laughs> I don't know, it just depends. Like if it was, if I really wanted to brand that, I would try to come up with a unique name um, that would be different from the other sites out there. Okay. If it's more of like a, you know, if you're just using it as like a lead gen or something where you're not so concerned with the brand name, then I'd go after trying to just stuff pure diverse into the into the domain name. It is for lead John Jimmy. Oh okay. So then what I would be inclined to do is to take these and stick them like if this is the domain. I would be inclined to stick these in as the silos. And then have um you know, I might even use Simple Silo Builder and just have those in as the pages and then do blog posts underneath each one of these. So, you know, that way you can start off with just a couple of blog posts and you can add more over time depending on how competitive these keywords are. Um, I've got too many tabs open. Can you tell me how competitive the top ranking site for Costa Rica Fishing Report is? You went away. I just meant domain authority. You got it. Yeah, it's um, it's not bad. Okay. Yeah, you could definitely get up there. The top two are in the 30s. Uh, and you got a 50 and a 41 and a 27. There's 90s all the way at the bottom, but those are uh, travel sites. So. Right. Yeah, you're looking at 35-ish for your DA. 30s, 35-ish. Yeah, I might make these um. Pages then and not posts. It'll just hold the domain authority better. So, um, yeah, I'd probably use it the, um, the, the the regular. Right now it's called Ultimate, and in a minute it's going to be called the Silo Builder um, plugin. And I'd put. I'd probably. Is he going to expand out beyond Costa Rica? He said not. Okay. He said we can bring him live for a minute if you want. If you want to talk to him for a little bit and find out more about what he's doing. Oh. Forty-one and thirty. Forty-three and thirty-one. Yeah, I would definitely do pages. And then I, I would do a minimum of five pages. 
under probably each one of these. If down here toward the bottom, like if you're dropping into, um, I don't know, DAs of under 20, then that's not so bad. You can probably get away with like three pages, three supporting pages, but where you've got the domain authority up in the 30s and 40s, you're going to need five supporting pages. Otherwise, you're going to need harder, um, like, better inbound links. But, um, yeah, if you put three to five supporting articles under each one of those silos, that'll give you a really nice size site. And then a couple of DA stacks and you should have it. separate blog domain. You know, I don't know that I would make it an entirely separate blog domain. Um, you can do that if you want to like try to grab a second spot in the SERPs, but if you stick the blog on a subdomain, then it'll build the domain authority of the website. So it just depends on how you want to apply it. Since you're an affiliate, since it's not your stuff, then you can't go in and get you know, like a bunch of citation links and stuff. If you made this more generic, um, like let's say you did like like some kind of a review site and then you ended up reviewing different um, places in Costa Rica where you can fish, things like that, then, then you could actually have that brand and you could have more of citations or at least um, you know, web directory type. I don't know that you could really get away with a citation because it's more for business. But, um, well, the other thing you can do, if you were going to blog, it, it all depends on how much time you want to spend in it. Like, is, if this is just something that you're planning on ranking and forgetting, um, then you're going to want to set it up so that it, it kind of does its own thing. Um, you know, you've got some kind of automated something or another going on there. But if it were something that you were actively going to engage in, uh, if it makes you enough money for that, then, uh, and you're going to blog regularly, then I would go ahead and set up some social profiles specifically for the site and run your feed through and, and stuff like that. And get, uh, sorry, i got construction going on here. And, um, and build your domain authority that way and your inbound links and your your traffic and everything. Okay, cool. Yeah, social explosion on the blog domain, that would be great. The other thing you could do, I think would lend itself um, really great to this topic would be a, a pin vid site that's just on generic phishing. It doesn't have to be on Costa Rica phishing. And then you can have some kind of a banner for, you know, like, uh, awesome fishermen getaways in Costa Rica or something like that that would cause them to click over to the site. Nice. Decent commission. Yeah. Yeah, then it's worth putting a little bit of work into. Cool. Any other comments on that, Jenny? I'd say it looks like a good niche. Right? Very doable for rankings on that. Yeah. All right, good. Yeah, I would do 10 silos. I would do a silo. Well, unless, like, if some of these will fit under something else. Let me just look at what you've got here for a second. You've got fishing, smart fishing. I mean, I don't know what half these terms mean, but I'm assuming that those are different kinds of fish. But um, isn't too much to put under it. Well, all right. So, so quipos, is that a fish? A particular kind of fish? It's an area. Hmm. Um. 
So really, in like when it comes down to this, it really for me depends on what are my most important keywords I want to rank. So you know, if my primary focus is going to be Costa Rica fishing, then that would be my top silo, and underneath it I would do, you know, packages for Costa Rica, um, you know, types of fish to catch, best fishing holes. Um, you know, then if you're going to focus just on area, then that's what I'd make the top level silos and put the supporting under each one of those. Yeah. Just to, because that's going to power up that, that your main keyword that you're trying to rank for. Oh, wow. But it looks like if most of those are destinations, I would make those the top level on each of those locations if that is the focus. Yeah. Rather than put this under a silo for destinations. Yeah. So here's the thing but that I If you're I trying see. to sell like packages for the gym then it would be different. Right. So that's the thing that I see is you've got Costa Rica fishing packages here, which is not the same kind of thing as destinations. So I would be inclined to to sort that into two different silos. And um, and if everything else, you've also got fishing reports. Now, if all of the rest of these are destinations, then you know it can come out looking something like that, right? So that you've really got Three different kind, three different silos. You've got a fishing report silo, a fishing packages silo, and a destination silo. And that will help all of these rank because you've put them all down. Google's going to know that they're all locations, right? So it's going to look at that and say, okay, these are different locations in Costa Rica, and not confuse it with reports and packages. Does that make it easier to? Um, to create pages where would you be able to have five pages under fishing packages? Are there like five different packages at least that you can put in there? Under the fishing report it would be the areas again. Well, then you could do it the other way around. You could have this as the silo, and then underneath that, you can have um, packages and reports. Right? I might even say travel packages. Travel packages. I don't want to put fishing in again because you've already got fishing in up here. You could say Samara and then say fishing packages and fishing reports. I don't know that it makes a difference whether you put fishing in the side of the level or fishing in the pages level. Does that make more sense? People search a lot on the areas. Yeah, so then, then having the area at the silo level would make more sense. So I would do that. I would do this. Oops. Jeez, Louise, do what I say. Don't do what you think you want me to do. Something like that. That's going to help get your areas ranked easier. Well, you're going to need a couple more pages besides just um, packages and reports. You know, you're going to want to say like, um, I don't know, boat trips or I don't know. I, I haven't done any keywords, so any keyword research on it, so I couldn't say. But 
the, if um, if what you want to rank for, like it all comes down to what's the term that you really want to rank for. And so if that's the term that you really want to rank for, then you check up and see what the domain authority is for your top ranked sites for that term. And then that'll give you an idea of how many pages you need. Typically, if you've got um, anything above like a 30, you're going to need five pages in there. Yeah, so seasons and areas and types of fish. Okay, so you can get there. Seasons. Dang, just like deleted already. Something like that. So Paul asks, if you already had fishing in the domain name, would the top silo be? So I'm, I'm not even doing the silo structure up here. So you're saying if I had, um, Paul, you're saying if I had fishing in the domain name, would I also have fishing here or would I, it would probably just be the locale? If I were stuck with that domain, I'd just have a big Quipos and Samara and Papagayo and all of those things. Can I have deep and switch? You mean can you have deep content and switch the um, Jesus. and switch the area names? Um, I would have these be, I mean, just for the sake of longevity, I would have these be as unique on each page as you can have. Fran, it's fine to use social explosion on the domain or on a subdomain. or yeah, Social explosion never leaves a footprint. It can't hurt your site. You can use it anywhere and everywhere. Is there anything else you would offer, Jimmy? Um, I don't have anything. All right. So Tyson says, can you just link to the same five pages from each silo? No, it's going to have to be, like, they can have the same title. I probably wouldn't even give them quite the same title. Um, no, actually, the more I think about it, I wouldn't give them the same title. Um, the same kind of concept. But there would be five distinct pages, just like if those are the things you're going to talk about with each area. If there's something that you can vary entirely, that'd be great. But if you're going to cover those five different ideas for each area, that's not a big deal. I would just change up the naming convention and I'd change the content as much as possible. Not more. Yeah, you shouldn't mention any one keyword in a URL string more than twice. And like if you mention it twice, so like fishing and fish, those are different keywords. Um, but where you've got fishing, if, if you had fishing and fishing underneath it, then um, then you have to start to be careful about your anchor text on your inbound links, how many times you use phishing. So I try to arrange it so that I don't duplicate anything, and then I, I don't have any fear of tripping a panda or a penguin or some other stupid black and white animal. Uh, 
A skunk, exactly. I mean, the last thing you want to trip Chaz is a skunk. Need to make a page since UWS. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know what you can do in DWS? You can just go add a keyword. Let me see if I can find that. Hang on a second. Um, let me... Let me, I'm trying to remember if it's in light or not. Let me just go look there for a minute in case that's what you're using. I know it's in DWS. Um, so here, you can come over here and import keyword data and you can add a single keyword. So if I want to do this like quick and dirty and I don't, I'm just like, like let me just do what it is I want to do, I would say like fishing trip. And I might not even, if I don't put anything under here and I add this keyword, then no, when you come back over here to the keyword decision screen, which is where it's going to pop you immediately. Um, come on, don't lie. Oh, all right. Oh made a liar out of me. Um, then when I come back over here, it's not going to actually show up, right? Because most of the times the show up keyword filter is off and because all of those values were zero, it's not going to show up. So I have to click that on and hit the submit. And then there should be something to do with phishing. You see it here. So because I put it in as all zeros, it's going to tell me that, you know, I'm not going to make any money off the keyword, but I can still grab that. And then, I mean, I have to select something first, like hairstyles. And then I can grab that keyword and toss it over there. So I just sit there on that other screen, and I enter all of my keywords, and then I come over here, and I just click, 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 and move to Blueprint. Bob's your uncle. Hang on just a second, guys. All right. Okay. Um, no, it's not a problem. So, like, I know they're, they're not your searching keyword. The, so those keywords are going to be the things that are going to be in the URL string. So you want whatever it is that you want to have for the keyword that's got the search value, you want that, or you at least want... Let me uh, to make it up that. You got to read the questions. The audience can't see the questions, so I'm gonna. What she answered was, he asked, "More pages for the site? Can I lower the words per page?" No, I answered the the one up above it. Oh. Those are not the keywords um, with searches. So, so. Well, what, what is the rule. question, Sue? No one can hear the question. I, so, I just read it. He said those are not the keywords. No, to the audience. I, I just read it. That that is the question. Can you read it again? Mm -hmm. But those are not search as keywords. Is that a problem? I mean, his, the, the verbiage was a little bit backwards because he was typing quickly. So um, what he's trying to say is the keywords that I've got here are not necessarily the keywords that have got search values that he's looking for. Okay. So when you think about what Google's actually trying to do, what they're going to see when they look at this is it's like fishermen paradise uh, paradise honest um, travel uh, let's see do Samara fishing travel packages right so that's that's this along with um, Samara along with travel packages right so th they see all of these keywords and so you would get any combination of those keywords would be your search terms. So if you're looking for um, Samara travel packages, that would be one keyword. Samara fishing travel packages, Samara fishing, um, Samara fisherman packages, 
even so it's not exactly in that order, you, it's not going to rank as high as um, a URL string that has all the words in exactly the right order, but you push enough domain authority to it and it'll get the um, broad match searches out of those keywords too. So you want to just make sure that it, it doesn't have to be exact, but you want to make sure that all of the words you want in your search strings are contained somewhere in that URL string. Does that make sense, Rizal? Good. So his second question was, if he's got more pages on the site, can he lower the words per page? Oh, you know, um, I have seen things rank that have, well, it actually had a lot of keywords per page. It just wasn't quality content. So um, I'm going to stick with my, you really need 300 keywords on a page. Um, if you've got a video, then 300 words is good. Otherwise, most people say like 500 words. If you've got... You know, so here's what I would say, like 250 to 300 words if you've got all those pages are good, and if you're not getting a page to rank the way you want it to, then um, even so you've got a fair amount of inbound links pointed to it, then I would increase the content a little bit or add some images or videos or something along those lines that just make it a little bit moreishness. I would always have an image on every single page, like I don't put up a page without an image on it. And um, I try my best to find a video for something. Oh, minimum 750 always. All right, well, then you're good. Um, Heidi's got a social explosion question. How to get a hold of it. Oh, oh you dropped her. Okay, good. All right, cool. So any other questions? Are we good? I think that's good. Um, let's go ahead and wrap this. It's been a couple hours. Or actually, how long has it been? Okay. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. I think it's a good stopping point. And I wanted to thank everybody who put their questions out there. Rizal, thank you so much. And Heidi, uh, thanks for uh, submitting your link. Being on a hot seat. Being on the hot seat. And good job. Everybody's, you know, doing their thing. And our goal, my personal goal over the next a uh, few weeks and months is to get you guys ramped up. And for those of you who are not pulling in the kind of money that we know you should be using our tools, we're going to sweeten that up and show you how it all works. Mike Clay is going to be helping us with that. So we wanted to start the buzz now. And yeah, thanks for being on the hot seat. Uh, Jimmy, thanks for being on the call. Uh, we didn't have a ton of SEO today, but that was there was some pretty good SEO stuff in there. Let's see. All right. So uh, next to, uh, next month, First Tuesday of next month, we will have the same Webby, and I'll try to get Mike Clay back. Uh, and we'll provide you with more information once we know date, rollout dates and everything else. So I'm really, really looking forward to giving you guys more and more information on this. I don't know if Mike Clay is still here, but Mike, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for sticking through uh, the SEO part and everything. I know that probably you can use that too for your agency. You guys have anything? You have anything to add, Mike, on closing? Uh, not that I can think of. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, I know you've been filling out the the information. The um, we've been working on the profile. I mean, sorry, the profile, the outline for the uh, new training coming up. It's it's getting big. It's gonna it's be fun. It's gonna be awesome. I'm super excited. So. <laughs> All right, you guys. That being said, we look forward to seeing you soon. Oh, quick uh, update. For some of you here are actually ThemeZoom certified advisors, and we are rolling out certification level one again, post certification. Uh, event and also Sue has already got everything on the calendar. I'm actually behind in getting that out to the masses. We are already ramping up for certification <laughs> next year. We're actually starting a year in advance. This year's live certification event was so huge that we have to actually begin preparations for it immediately after ending <laughs> the one that we had a couple weeks back. Uh, so that's going to be next year. And regardless of the pace and the speed with which you're moving, uh, just know that that's there for you. Every single certification and live training, I believe there's a couple more seats in certification level one starting this Thursday. Uh, whether you're able to make it or on the next one, all the prices of any of our university level courses get 
uh, put towards the price of a live certification event whenever you should decide to join us uh, at live here in Phoenix. So that's the program we've set up is to make sure that everything you invest in your training for your digital agency is usable for our live events, which are really, really awesome. So that being said, those of you who are already, remember these are perpetual mastermind training groups. So if you've already paid for certification level month, one launching on Thursday, you can just show up and audit it again. Uh, those of you, there are some of you running busy businesses and you're not able to take the eight week course all at once. You come back around on the next one and participate. You can audit those courses again. All right, you guys, thank you so much. This has been Sue Bell, Russell Wright, Mike Clay, Jimmy Kelly on the monthly Network Empire webinar. We look forward to seeing you on the inside. Thank you guys. Thanks, folks.